I had a talk, Reverend Al, with a very highly placed member of the Jewish rabbinate. He's over 4,000 North American rabbis and the secretary of the World Jewish Congress. Russell Simmons, the hip-hop guru, arranged the meeting at his home. Martin Luther King III was there. Dr. Cornell um, West was there. The rabbi and his wife and the, the head of um, uh, an ethics um, organization was there, a white person and his wife. And we started talking about Jewish-black relationships. And the rabbi said that the last person that they, in words, had to overcome was Louis Farrakhan. The talk got heated. But Farrakhan's face never fell. Wait. And he never got angry. I was just as calm as a doctor dealing with an ill patient. And when I found that, no matter how brilliant and cogent my argument was on the basis of language and its conveyance of an idea, they didn't want to hear the argument, their view was their view. And I said, oh, I see what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with illness. The rabbi became a little angry. He said, you see, it's the use of language again. You, you use the word illness. I said, how would you want me to say it? That you are not well or that you have a problem? Show me a better way to say what I mean because I don't wish to offend you. But what I see is 2,000 years of your exile. 2,000 years of your suffering. And probably as many years of guilt for failing in your part of your covenant relationship with God has caused an illness that demands divine intervention. So help me God. These are my words. Is that correct? Now, I'm saying that to say this. If I allowed myself to get angry because they refused to hear my word. I would never have been able to see the scope of the illness with which I had to deal. Brother Leonard was there and Brother Leonard spoke of In the last 10 years, every black leader of consequence, you have called them anti-Semites. And he ran the list down. 
none of them who were anti-Semitic. Andrew Young. Nelson Mandela. The mayor of Los Angeles. Tom Bradley. Anybody that didn't do what they expected to be done in the manner, Jesse Jackson. And we, we ran the list down. And it got hot. But I was so calm. I said, we must not let this end on a sour note. Because we have made a good first step that must be followed by many more. You were there, Minister Benjamin, were you not? The next day, I met with another rabbi. And that rabbi said, I have studied you, Farrakhan. He was 70 years old. I know you're not anti-Semitic. I know that Foxman is wrong, and I read Abraham uh, Bronfman's, uh, Edgar Bronfman's, and I know he's wrong. I know he lied. But I see you as the only one who can be a bridge between the Arabs and the Israelis. He said the Arabs are A, the Israelis are C, and what they need is B to link A and C. And you, Farrakhan, are B. Wait, wait. But he said, I want to help you and coach you in understanding the Jewish mind. Now, uh, you may say, who is he to coach Farrakhan? Farrakhan needs coaching. When you get so arrogant that you think you don't need a coach, no matter how great your raw talent is, you need a trainer to bring it out. And where I have failed is in not knowing or caring even about the mind and the state of that mind as I rebuke them. I care about you. So even though I rebuke you, yet there's so much love in it, you know what I mean? You say, well, I, I can't kick my butt, but I know he loves me, and I'm with Farrakhan. But sometimes maybe Farrakhan needs a little butt kicking. Now, you may say, now, Farrakhan, why did you say that? Well, God sends people to prophets and sends people to kings to help them be more effective. You got the right spirit, you, you got the right word, but maybe you're not conveying it properly. Will you be open? Or will your face fall and you get angry and sin lieth at the door? I'm saying all of that to say this. People's minds are sacred. And their minds have been polluted disfigured and anybody that goes to heal 
humanity in its diverse and yet common suffering has to be skilled in the use of language. See things through the lens of race. Bad things are going to happen. And unfortunately today, people like Cannon and others, well known and not so well known, they don't know very much apparently about the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., what real heroism is and what the fight against racism, the way to, to, to uh, make that fight, the fight of all Americans, is to bring us all into the same camp. You don't do so when you're telling someone who's watching it on YouTube or watching it live, oh, by the way, you're not really a Jew. You guys are not Jewish. You're all a bunch of phonies. Uh, that is the ultimate uh, uh, insult and, um, and a dangerous one. The statement involved the facts that white and Jewish world powers are largely maintained by keeping black people ignorant of our true identity of being the prophetic children of Israel or God's true chosen people. That's not anti-Semitic. That's a theological position that proves to be true. And it's a truth that white Jewish scholars are afraid to discuss with us because it proves that they have been lying and deceiving the world about their identity and ours. In fact, the whole Jewish political state of Israel was founded and supported by white world powers based on the false idea that some Europeans are the chosen people of God. Now that's white supremacy. And they have oppressed Palestinians and Africans and taken land in that region based on these false beliefs. Now isn't that an egregious act of white Jewish world domination? I'm waiting. It's admitted that those European Jews are not indigenous to that land, but they call it anti-Semitic if black people cite these facts. You can see why none of the mainstream reports dealt with the real issue of Deshaun Jackson's post. So they focused on the fake Hitler attribution so you don't question all the other facts regarding how they've deceived the world about their identity and our true identity as the chosen. Besides, their Talmudic codes and belief describe black people as monkeys. Keeping this truth away from black people is one of their major priorities, which is why they've done all they can to keep us from learning from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. See, if black folks knew the truth about how European Jews have stolen our prophetic identity so they can manipulate world affairs, then that truth would shatter their world of white supremacy. This must be why so-called Jewish diplomats stated that black American youth are Israel's enemies. You have a whole Jewish government based on anti-black racism, but they'll call it anti-Semitic and make our leaders and celebrities apologize for pointing it out. So it's a fact that so-called Jews have influenced and dominated the world into supporting the state of Israel based on lies, thievery, murder, and mass deception. That's not anti-Semitic. That's a statement of provable facts. So just because Deshaun Jackson attributed realities to the wrong person doesn't mean that those realities aren't true. If leaders and journalists claim such posts to be anti-Semitic without addressing the anti-black reality those statements highlight, then it's obvious they're placing white Jewish feelings above the suffering black people. They'll always use the anti-Semitic trick to keep you from focusing on the anti-black racism they've been committing against us. So stay connected with us as we show and prove how the research verifies the revelation. I want to help us to understand the root of their rage, their anger, and their hatred. They want to put on us 
and on our minister what they are. Farrakhan is not a hater. His speeches are not hate-filled. You're speaking on who you are. You are the hater and filled with hate for the truth. And you're angry because Brother Farrakhan continuing the work of Master Far Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that started the uncovering, the unmasking, the unveiling, and the revealing of the enemy in 1930 by revealing who the devil was. But Satan was still hiding, was still concealed. And that was left for another man to do from the two. That the uncovering will be completed when Satan is made known to the world. And once Satan is made known to the world, the people are set free. Well, first of all, Farrakhan is not only an anti-Semite, he's anti-white, he's anti-woman, he's anti-gay, he's anti-everything decent in this country. And when you get bigots uh, supporting him, and people like Al Sharpton, who has his own history of anti-Semitism, Black Lives Matter, which singled out only Israel and called it a genocidal and apartheid country, which was anti-Semitic as well, what we have in this country is people who believe in an affirmative action program for racism for African Americans. That if you're African American, you can get away with supporting anti Semitism, anti gay, anti white. But, but, but wait and a minute, wait, wait, wait. Because, you know, Trump is being accused of racism, but now we've got an MSNBC host, uh, Al Sharpton, defending this anti, you know, this anti Semite, this racist, anti gay mm -hmm. individual. I don't understand why more people are not condemning Farrakhan, including Democrats. Well, the Democrats should condemn him. The women's movement should condemn him. Gay rights movement should condemn him. Everybody should condemn him. And I don't never have understood why Al Sharpton, who has a history of anti-Semitism, a history about lying and falsely accusing people of crime, should be on a major uh, network. If you had a white person who was equivalently racist against blacks and who defended David Duke, he would never, ever get on the air on a national network and yet we have affirmative action for, for black racism. And that's just unjustified. We have to have zero tolerance for bigotry, racism, anti-Semitism. And under the standard of zero tolerance, uh, not only doesn't Farrakhan satisfy it, but neither does Sharpton, neither does Black Lives Matter, and neither do the congressmen who are now standing in support of a bigot and anti-Semite. Imagine a Republican congressman standing in support of David Duke. And Farrakhan is much, much, much more dangerous than David Duke. Because Farrakhan has the support of hundreds of thousands of African Americans. What's my source for that? My source for that is Sharpton, who says that he has massive support in the African American community. David Duke doesn't have any support. And so we should not have a double standard. And Democrats and all decent people should come out not only against Farrakhan, but any congressperson who supports Farrakhan. Yeah, so let's get to one of those congressmen, Professor. It's Democrat Congressman of Illinois. He's Danny Davis. He tried to clarify his position he and his praise. Uh, Danny Davis has praised Farrakhan and has met with Farrakhan. Here's what he's saying now, quote, I disagree with Minister Farrakhan in terms of white people being devils and Jewish people being satanic. But I also protect his right as a free individual to say and do whatever he wants to do. I think he does outstanding things for especially blacks who are unsure about themselves and people who have been in prison. Your reaction to that? People said the same thing about Adolf Hitler, that he did good things for... Uh, the German people. You cannot justify this kind of bigotry by saying that he also does some uh, decent things. And I think it's a scandal that the Democratic Party and liberals uh, and, and the New York Times uh, lets uh, uh, black bigots off the hook and only attacks the bigotry on the right. Today, the danger of bigotry is far greater from the hard left, from the African-American community, from the Muslim community, from many other communities which tolerate bigotry uh, than it is from the right. Look, anti-Semitism is wrong from both the right and the left. We all condemn it from the right. Let's join together and condemn it from the left, regardless of the race of the person 
who's behind it. Professor Alan Dershowitz, we love having you on. Come back Mr. soon, sir. Mr. Dershowitz, listen to the words of God from my mouth for you. You're such a skillful deceiver. You deceived your brothers in the Senate to vote not to impeach Mr. Trump. You were very skillful. But see if you can impeach the wisdom of God. You're Satan masquerading as a lawyer. Satan, walking in full sight, deceiving whoever they can deceive. Mr. Greenblatt, you're Satan. Those of you that say that you are Jews, I will not even give you the honor of calling you a Jew. You're not a Jew. You're so-called. You're Satan. And it's my job now to pull the cover off of Satan so that every Muslim, when he sees Satan, pick up a stone. As we do in Mexico. Uh oh. Then he said, every Muslim, when he sees Satan, up a stone as we do in Mecca when you know who Satan is you don't have to kill him no the stone of truth see that's what you throw but you decided to stop as you always do and take a few little words and take them out of context so you can continue your agenda to supply a reason to the American people, the world public, that the minister is a hater and that this amounted to a threat against your life. But you didn't put the context that when you know who Satan is, you don't have to kill him. No, the stone of truth, that's what you throw. But you wanted to misrepresent them because you've got an agenda. And God gave us your agenda before you even came into existence to play the role. Your plan was written 2,000 years ago. Well, I'm going to get to it in a minute. It's all laid out. The script has already been written. And that's why in the Quran, it says, had we wished to take a pastime from before, surely we would have done it. Nay, we hurled truth against falsehood until we knock out its brain. The reason they hate me, this is the minister, is because they know I represent the end of their civilization. I represent the uncovering of their wickedness, fulfilling the judgment that God has come to bring down on America and the world. The Talmud is the enemy of the people who have received by God the prophets of the Torah. Miss Chelsea, my black brothers and sisters, the reason they hate me, because they know I represent the end of their civilization. I represent the uncovering of their wickedness, fulfilling the judgment that God has come to bring down on America and the you world. You really think that I hate the Jewish people? You do not know me at all. That's right. Come on. You that have been 
in my close conversations have you ever heard me out of the words of death to the jewish people so if the jews are saying that we did try to kill him and you know i'm alive then what should that tell you about who i am my enemies have raised the talmud above the torah and then spread the lie against god that they are stronger than god because they put their word that they made over what god revealed through the mouth of his prophets so that's why they hate me americans because they are wicked and they know they cannot say i'm lying on them they just say he's a bigot he's anti-semitic he called us termites i never called you a termite no i did not and if you study my words carefully i was talking to a percentage of people that master fad muhammad had um, given us in our studies uh, uh, 85 percent of the people who don't know the law of cause and effect who are poison animal eaters who believe in a mystery god but the 10 percent they know god is real they are the blood suckers of the poor so if you are a blood sucker and the poor is who you sucking from you don't want to stop sucking so anybody that points out the sucker and puts fire to the sucker where he falls off what he's sucking that's the enemy to the blood sucker. See, Brother Araf in his letter to Alan Dirch, which points out their track record, their history, that in the early 1900s, that you, members of the Jewish community, attacked economic minded black leaders like Booker T. Washington and Marcus Garvey and finance only the black organizations that promoted an anti-economic agenda like the NAACP. That's not ours. We didn't start that. You started it. In fact, the NAACP's first president, Brother Student Minister Ara points out, Joel Sping, uh, Spingard, who was a Jewish man and also a major in the intelligent branch of the military, spied on the group for the U.S. government. Right. You've always been guilty of spying on us. What are you afraid of? Why do you always have to deal shrewdly with us? During the 1970s, Jews were against affirmative action and agreed with the concept of reverse discrimination, which was used to help cripple black progress in every field. Oh, we can go back to the post-Civil War and Reconstruction era. Members of the Jewish community became leaders in the trade union movement and set up racist policies that forced millions of blacks out of employment in the skilled trades. This is your history. You owe us an, ap an apology. One member of the Jewish community invested in a new group of white terrorists known as the Ku Klux Klan. This is why you don't like what the minister is saying, because you were fine 
when we focused on the white man generally, when we talked about the English man's role in the transatlantic slave trade, the Dutchman, the Portuguese, and as long as that stayed where it was, you were fine, but you were up underneath it all as the Portuguese and the Dutch slave traders that claimed to be Jews. Oh yeah. Was it not your merchants that sold sheets and guns and ropes to the Ku Klux Klan? You can say you're a friend of ours? This is your history. And that's why the book, The Secret Relationship, because on the surface, you've always tried to say that you've been our friend, that you've been there for us. When, where? Y'all all right? During the Reconstruction, Jewish merchants targeted and exploited the poor black cotton sharecroppers, growing extremely wealthy in the process. And many Jews, like the Lehman Brothers, were major dealers of slave pick cotton, as well as the owners of the cotton mills. And many black sharecroppers fell into debt and lost their land to these overcharging Jewish merchants. Our research published in The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volumes 1 and 2, quotes many Jewish scholars and admit that Jewish merchants owned, insured, and financed slave ships and outfitted them with chains and shackles. Jews were the slave auctioneers, the brokers, and wholesalers, keeping the slave economy oiled with money, markets, and supplies. The Jews in the South were significant owners of the cotton plantations and slaves. Yes, they were rabbis who owned, rented, and sold slaves and denounced the abolitionists. There were members of the Jewish communities who were merchants and peddlers that collaborated with slavery and financed plantation operations and even bought and sold whole plantations, slaves and all. And they sold to plantation masters everything from slaves to drugs to whips, shackles and chains. In February of 1877, on February 26th, the birth of our Savior, Master Far Mohammed, it happened to be a Jewish congressman from Louisiana, William M. Levy, who argued for the Compromise of 1877, which saw uh, Rutherford B. B. Hayes become president in exchange for removing federal troops in the southern state. And you know, and it's well documented that this notorious act resulted in the death of the reconstruction and the imposition of Jim Crow segregation creating a condition of de facto slavery which lasted until the Supreme Court decision Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954. So wicked was Levy's plan that it is known by historians as the great betrayal of the Negro. This is nothing but facts. Your rabbis created the Talmud and concocted the so-called Hamitic curse 
and claim that black people were cursed by God to be black and ugly and punished to be your slaves forever. This is how you relate to us. You don't have show compassion towards us. When we came up from the south into the larger cities in the north, when blacks began to purchase land and houses in neighborhoods where you live, did you stay? No. You sold your property, your homes. You got out of the synagogues and you left it. Where have you been a friend to us? It's a legitimate question. And look, we don't have no hatred for you. Just don't stand in the way of us exercising our human rights to have freedom, justice, and equality. Don't deny us that right and to be an independent and free people on our planet. Who are you to stand in the way? Were you not guilty of the predatory mortgage loan fraud that defrauded tens and thousands of Americans from home ownership? Have you not been the slum lords in the big cities of New York, Philadelphia, Newark, uh, 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 Chicago, and in other major cities that you would let those apartment buildings run down and never invest it? but because blacks were living in there and you have a devalued view of blacks. You allowed us to suffer. Stop telling us that you are our friend. Your history does not show that you've been a friend of black people and suffering people and the Native American and the brown and Latino people and suffering humanity. Now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. Greetings, dear listeners. We have been blessed by Almighty God, Allah, over the 90 years of our work in the nation of Islam and lifting our people up from the miserable condition in which we find ourselves. We ask your support of our effort and we hope that you will be generous and make a contribution to the work of the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan by clicking the button below or go to noi.org forward slash donate. We thank you in advance for your support. May Allah God continue to bless you and your families. Assalamu alaikum. This house is dedicated to knowledge and to the spreading of knowledge. Elijah Muhammad inspired new thought, new mind, new way of civilization among black people. But he wanted a house from which a light could be lifted up to give guidance to all who would be guided as this world begins to close down. This National Center for the re-education and retraining of the black man and woman 
but for the totality of the human family of our planet. I named this mosque after the only woman that the Quran names a chapter after, the mother of Jesus, Maryam. All human beings need to be re-educated. That is the purpose of the National Center.